the Northwest Tennessee Local Food Network serves as a catalyst for thriving and equitable local food systems that is accessible to all. One bell pepper that's been just sort of like roughly chopped up, doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, we've got about a third of a garlic clove. Uh, depending on your uh, preference for spicy, we're going to go a teaspoon of chili oil, right? Or all the way up to three tablespoons if you want it extra kicking, okay? We're going to use about a teaspoon to a tablespoon on the sriracha. It's mainly just to give us a little bit of color later. Um, this should go anywhere from five, five to 15 minutes. The chili oil already has a lot of developed flavor in it. So that's one of the reasons we don't have to like let this go for a long time, as well as cheating with the uh, bell pepper and sriracha to add hopefully a little bit of color. So if you, you know, you can start to start to use your spoon and hold it up. Right, we can see that that oil's already got some nice like amber color to it. So once we once we blend it and strain it, that color should like develop a little bit more, and all your flavor will be there. So if I don't if I don't have if I don't have a mesh filter like I did. Uh, I'm just going to get a coffee filter, put it over a cup or a bowl, put my put my mix in there and just slowly squeeze it out. Don't do too hard to rip the paper. Um, or you can just kind of let it set gently with a like you can put another cup and an onion on top of it and mm -hmm. just let it like slowly mash, slowly mash down over like 15, 20 minutes. And you'll be left with uh, with your residual oil that we're looking for. This is too big. I don't want to. I want to break this down and make this a little bit more easy, right? So we're just gonna we're gonna cut it in half. Okay. Now, since we're making a bisque, I don't have to worry about my knife cuts being pretty, mm -hmm. right? But what I do want to make sure of is that all my knife cuts are about the same size, so that everything cooks at the same time. Okay. For this soup, I don't want it. Don't want it too big. So we're just gonna think like uh, steak cut fries, right? Just like nice. Right. Okay, and that's it? You'll put that in the pan like no. that? Okay. No, 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 <laughs> we're gonna go, we're gonna go to here and then I'm gonna cut, right? So if you feel uncomfortable about judging, a, a good rule of thumb is look, these pieces, this is the same. This slippery dude, I don't know how I, did that to make it perfectly the same yeah. size, but I did it on accident. Okay, I probably didn't plan that. <laughs> All right, but look, so these guys are going to be about the same size. So what I can do is I can cut this in half, then I can cut this in half again, and then I'm going to move back and cut this in half again. So now they're all relatively the same size. I'm just going to nestle this knife up to the edge of my knuckle here, right? So now I'm never going to bring the knife higher than my knuckle. All right. <laughs> so now we're able to do this. Okay, I'll never cut myself, right? I don't move, I use my thumb, right? Like if we're like if we're like rocking and chopping something. I'm gonna rest here. My thumb pushes. Mm. So as you're learning to do this, if you notice the knife never moves. Right, so this is the safest way to cut. Knife is always in the same spot. You're feeding with that thumb. Mm -hmm. right. I want to leave this on, the root in. It's going to help me. Okay, so I'm going to turn the onion on its side like this. Okay, for the first cut, I'm going to cut. I want to cut this part off, the 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 bulb in, right. Got it? 
I feel like I do. Got it. All right. Next, we're just going to cut. Look, just going to cut this right in half. Okay. All right. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Skin. Yeah, I always call it paper. I know it's not paper, but <laughs> it's it paper, okay? Yeah. All right. So now we're going to perforate the onion, right? I'm not going to cut all the way through it. I'm going to put the tip of my knife about right here where I'm going to put my knife, right? So again, look, I'm going to rest my finger right where it needs to be here, okay? And I'm going to go all. All the way down the okay. Now, some people are going to tell you to cut this way, but that it doesn't matter. <laughs> ah, yes, this is dangerous. It's dangerous, and then all the onions start wobbling when you're cutting them. Okay, and also the way the onion was designed, it's already cut. It's already in layers, so I don't need to cut in this way. It's already cut for us, right? So again, here. Gonna go right down the onion. Okay. Jennifer. It looks like Ricky had a question. I'm not a, uh, it's fine. Go slow. Don't cut, don't cut all the way through. You want to stop the tip of your knife right there. Right now, I want to I want to be even with my strokes. Okay. So for the soup, I don't want it too small, but just to like one show off and like two. If you need to, <laughs> if you need to dice onions, look. There's your there's your dice onion. Oh man. Okay. Oh. Beautiful. So, but we're just going to go about right, about right there for the soup, okay? Now, look, we're not going to cut the onion all the way through. It's going to be for two reasons. Save your fingertips. I don't know how good you guys are using a knife, okay? And two, I'm going to cut this little part right off here. And we're going to save this for our stock we're going to make later, okay? <laughs> So this stock doesn't have to taste great, but pretty much what we're doing is just not throwing away stuff uh, and we're making it taste better than water. Got my onions in here. All right, I had a half a cup, half a cup of olive oil. Uh, we can keep we can keep just the oil in there. I'm gonna put butter in there because I like butter. Half a stick. Yeah, half a stick of butter. For a vegan, no butter. For just no butter. No butter. You That's throw it. some uh, throw some coconut oil in there. So we're gonna caramelize this. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this going. I'm just gonna get my onions moving, and then I'm gonna add my squash. There's natural sugars and things, uh, so we're trying to bring those sugars out, and, and that's where that comes from. You're getting the caramel color, and you're you're bringing out, you're heightening the sweetness a little bit of what's already naturally going on there. So. So I'm going to move this to the stove. This is probably going to go for 15, 20 minutes, maybe, until it's pork tender. Okay. Lid on or off? Uh, I, I would put, put lid, lid on for this. Uh, but before you do that, you want to make sure everything is sort of coated and the oil's all moved around the pan so that that way nothing's going to stick. Everything's nice. Got a good color of oil. I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna keep it on high heat, and I'm gonna keep a good stir on it so nothing sticks. Uh, I don't want to stir it too much because I want to. I want to build some build some uh, bond at the bottom of the pot uh, of the pot. You know, like a little sticky goodness where it starts to char and caramelize, and then stir it so that that sort of flavor gets incorporated into the soup. With this 
soup. We've let it. We've let it gone. I've occasionally gone over there and gave it a little yeah. jiggle and stir. Okay, so so this is this. Our, our squash is nice and and little fork tender. Okay, nice and mushy. All right, I don't want it to. I don't want it to get to mash. Right. Like it still, it still has a little bit of bite to it. It's not just right. It's not just mush when I pick it up. Okay, but I can still get through it. So now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in the blender, and I'm gonna let it go by itself with just the, with just this pot in it. Uh, I'm gonna taste it and see how thick it is, and then from there I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning and I'll add some liquid to adjust the viscosity of it. This is that hot pot's gonna expand, right? So if I fill my blender up too full when it is hot, that's how it, it overflows. So I'm only gonna fill about halfway up so that hopefully I don't I, we're not gonna run into an issue. So here's our stock. The, the stock has been boiling this whole time. So see if I move everything so it has a has a nice little color to it, right? So we're just gonna just so just a little bit so it won't go so the first batch won't go up. Oh, here's my egg. That is too thick. That is mashed potatoes, yeah. right? But well, that's fine. That's perfect. Okay, okay. for what we're doing the first thing, right? Uh I'm going to go ahead and tell you without even tasting it that it needs salt. I haven't put any, I haven't put any in this. Right, I know, I know it. Right. So, anything we do with flavor, I don't want to like be small snip. But well, you purposely said you're going to add salt for this reason. Mm -hmm. And so, probably for purposes of TV time, I'm going to do one blender of this, and that's going to be our soup. Mm -hmm. But, and look, I want to do all of this. Okay, I'm gonna do all of this at once and I'm gonna add it to a bowl, like right, like I would take this, put it in a different bowl, mash all this down. Mm -hmm. When all of this is mashed, that's when I'm slowly gonna stir in my vegetable stock to get the consistency down. Okay, this I, this is about how I like it. I like it. Okay. I like it nice and thick. I want to know it's easy something. If you guys want this more thin, if you want it more thinned out, add more stock, add a little bit more butter. Okay. I'm just gonna do a little salt and pepper. You got your chili oil. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. chili oil. Was that odd number? Kick a little salt on the up high because we're fancy, and then there you go. Mm -hmm.